Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to do a quick example of the one period binomial model, but we're gonna show you more or less how you would use this in practice as an arbitrage opportunity if it is mispriced. So first off, let's say you have a stock price at time zero, which is 100. It's 110 if it goes to heads, and it's worth 80 if it goes to tails. V of zero is the value of the option that we're looking for. You have a strike price of 102. This would lead this to $8, and this would be zero, as this is a call option. Your interest rate is, say, 5%, which means 1 plus R is 1.05. Your upstate is equal to 110 divided by your stock price at time zero, which is 100, and so your U is 1.1. Your D is going to be 80, which is your stock price at tails, divided by the original stock price at time zero, and this is going to be 0 0.8. Your P tilde is going to be your risk neutral probability. Uh, this is 1.05, which is one plus R, minus 0 0.8, which is your D, and this is all over U minus D. And this will give you 0.25 over 0.3, and this is approximately, there's going to be rounding issues here because I'm only gonna do two or three places for the decimal. Uh, your Q tilde is going to be uh, just one minus this, but if you wanna do the math for it, it's 1.1, which is your U minus one minus your R, which is 0.05, divided by U minus D, and this will give you 0 0.05 divided by 0.3, and this is equal to 0 0.167. All right, so now your Q is 0 0.167. If you add these together, you'll get one, which makes sense for probabilities. V of zero is going to be the value of your option. One over one plus the interest rate times um, your head's probability, which is your P times eight, and so again, we got this eight up here from the value of 110 minus your strike price, and then plus your Q tilde, which is going to be 0.167 times the value option, which should be zero at a call. This should give you some value, which is going to be approximately 6.308. Again, you're gonna get slightly different numbers depending how you round. So now we need to figure out how many bonds and how many stocks we need to replicate this position. Uh, delta zero is gonna be the number of stocks you need. All it is is eight, which is the up case for your option, minus the down case, divided by um, your stock price at heads and your stock price at tails. So essentially the derivative of the change in the value of the option over the change in the value of the stock. And this is eight over 30, which is approximately 0 0.266. And then the sixes keep going, but we'll just round it to seven. Okay, so we need 0.22667 stocks. So now to figure out how many bonds we need, let's just plug this into the equation, which is going to be uh, your head's stock price, which is 110, times the number of stocks you have, which is 0.267, plus B, which is the number of bonds you need, times 1.05. And this has to be equal to eight, which is your up, up uh, value of your option. This comes out to 29.37 plus B times 1.05 is equal to eight. If you minus this portion here, uh, you end up with 29.37, and this gives you negative 21.37. And then you divide by the last piece here. This is just basic algebra. You can make it look all nice and pretty if you want, but um, your B, so the number of bonds is going to be 20.35. Since it is negative, this means we are going to borrow $20.35. Now, we don't really know if this is correct, right? Let's just double check our work to make sure everything adds up the way it's supposed to be. All right, so in this scenario, we have the stocks that we're going to need at time zero is going to be 0 0.267. Um, B is going to be the bonds that we need, and this is going to be negative 20.35, which means we're going to borrow it. Uh, H1 is going to be stock price times your number of stocks minus how much we borrowed times one plus R. This is a quick reminder. This would be 110 times 0 0.267 minus 20.35 times one 
0.05. So I was gonna do an ad here, but that's okay. And this will give you, if you do the math, it's 29.37 minus 21.3675, if you get more accurate. And this is approximately 8.0025. So we're just gonna say this is $8, and yes, it does replicate, check. Okay, so now the second one is going to be tails at times one, and this is going to be your stock price, which is 80 in the down position, or the tails position times 0 0.267, which is the number of stocks we have, minus how much you borrowed, which is 2035, times 1.05, which is one plus the interest rate. Uh, and this is gonna give you 21.36 minus 21.36, and this is going to be equal to zero. So check, in this case here, we have the value is eight and zero. And like we mentioned before, this V of zero is the value of the option, and this is approximately $6.30-ish, give or take, depending on how you do the rounding. All right, so this is fine. We've tested it, we know this is correct. Um, we know that this is how many stocks we need, this is how many bonds we need, and this is the price of the option. So now let's move on and figure out how do you arbitrage this if the price is wrong. So just to refresh guys, we just showed all this math, which essentially simplifies down to saying you can take stocks plus bonds and you can get some option. So in this case, this is a call option. So hypothetically, whatever the price of the call option is that we calculated has to be the exact same as the replicating portfolio, which is the number of stocks and bonds needed to replicate this portfolio. So we have two scenarios here. Let's say scenario one, which is that the stock plus the bond is going to be less than the value of the option. And this will allow for an arbitrage opportunity. And so we know that this replicating portfolio is worth $6.308. And let's just say that the option here is gonna be selling for $6.50. So we're going to buy low and sell high to take the, op the arbitrage opportunity. So in this case, we're going to sell the option, which means you're going to receive $6.50 from somebody that you sold this option to. Okay, then we are going to buy 0.267 stocks so that we can continue this replication at $100 per stock and this will give you the price of $26.67 give or take um, for this 0.267 shares of this stock. Now we are going to borrow $20.35 just as we did in the replication process and when you do all the math here, at time one for your heads, you're gonna end up with $8 as we showed in the example when you actually exercise this option. At time one for tails, we'll end up with $0 if you go through the entire process. And you can do the math again, which we just did in the test, to show that when you uh, buy 0.267 stocks and you borrow $20.35, put a negative here, uh, this would give you $8 and $0. So at the beginning of this, we ended up with $6.50. And then we bought and sold stocks and bonds, which had a value of 6,308. So you would minus what you paid for, which is the value. And this will give you a profit of 18 cents. So the thing is, is when you buy and sell the stocks and bonds, in this case, and then you also sell this option, which is overpriced, you end up with 18 cents extra. So at the end of it, in time one, you would have $8 plus your 18 cents, and this would give you $8.18. And in entails, you would also have this 18 cents from the beginning of the transaction that we did nothing with, and this will give you 18 cents extra in these two cases. So as you can see here, essentially you're guaranteed a profit of 18 cents because there's a mispricing of 18 cents between both the stock and bond portfolio that's replicating and the option itself. Now if you wanted to get more tricky and more financial and try to maximize profits, you could say at the beginning of this time period, this 18 cents here was actually invested in a risk-free rate at this bond that we purchased. So if you purchased an extra, 18 cents in the bond, you would just take your 18 cents and then multiply it by 1.05 and this would give you 
a technical profit of 0 0.189. So this is your profit if you invest it in bonds and these will give you a profit of 18 cents with no investing. So now let's say the opposite happens. So we know that the stock plus the bond, this is equal to 6,308. And let's say now that the option in this case is selling for $6. So in this case, we have um, that S plus B is going to be greater than the option. And again, this is a call. So what we're going to do here is we're going to buy the option because it is cheap at $6, okay? And then we're going to replicate this portfolio. And the simple math here is these should be equal. So if you know the price of this, you could just take the difference. And this would be negative because you're buying it, but you'd end up with a profit of 0 0.308. This is just the shortcut, but let's prove it real quick. So at time zero, um, it cost you $6 because you actually purchased the option for $6. Um, you sell, 0 0.267 stocks and you lend so now instead of borrowing we're lending the same amount in bonds that we did before if you look back here at this example which we tested we're going to do the opposite of this math so instead of 29.32 for the stock and negative 21.36.75 for the bond we're flipping the order here so we're selling a stock and we're going to do lend 21.36.75 so when this happens, you can do the simple math. If you have heads, so S of one of heads here, you're going to end up with negative 29.37 plus 21.3675, and this will approximately give you negative $8 because you're selling the call option here. In the tails case here, so I guess that it's not really S of zero, but when you have the tails scenario here, you're going to have a negative 21.36 and then you're going to have plus 21.36 and we're still going to get zero. So this option, this case here is going to be, um, the value of the option is going to give you negative eight and it's gonna give you zero. And this makes sense because this is a short call option because we're actually selling the call. Now, if you come back to here and you remember, we bought the option for $6, okay? So when you end up in period one, if you end up with heads, we get $8 from the call option that we actually purchased. Then we replicated the portfolio with stocks and bonds and we lost $8. This gives you zero cents. Um, again, when you have the call option, it gave us $0. And when you replicate it with the stocks and bonds portion, we got $0 and this will give you zero. So this means that our call option and our stock and bond portfolio cancel out and we end up with nothing, okay? But now if you remember from the beginning here, we ended up with $0.308 left over. So in this case, we'd still end up with $0.308 in our pocket that we just kept, that we didn't use for this replicating portfolio. Now again, if you're smart and you wanted to invest that, you could go ahead and invest that. And again, you would just take at the beginning of this entire process here, you would have 0308 in dollars here, you'd invest that at one plus R, and this would give you three, two, three, four. So this is a point three, two, four. So again, guys, you can take two different strategies here. You can just hold on to the cash difference at the beginning and just end up with that as excess profit at the end, or you can reinvest this amount and you can actually have a little bit more because of the risk-free rate that you're actually borrowing or lending this money at. So in this case, in both cases here, we're lending the extra money to make a little bit of profit. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that's a little more clear. Uh, it gets a little confusing, but at the end of the day, it's quick and easy to remember that your stocks and your bonds will exactly replicate the option as we can do this. Uh, it gets more complex when you have more periods. This is only the one period binomial, but I hope you guys find this helpful. If you do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell button next to it to get weekly updates. And as always, until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.